scary things interest you, you're in the right place. If you like today's article, then remember where you found it so you can check back for more. The Sad Outcome of Ebenezer McBurney Byers by Doug Crabtree Sadly, Eben Byers is most known for being the man without a jaw, but some digging into his biography will unveil a fascinating history of U.S. medicine and an unforgettable lesson on the importance of balance in one's life and how all things must be done with careful consideration. Industrialist and founder of the Garrard Iron Company, Alexander Byers became a father in 1880 for the fourth time on April 12th in the United States town of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. His son, Ebenezer McBurney Byers, or Eben, eventually became the chairman of Garrard Iron. In the meantime, however, Eben grew up a student at St. Paul's School, then Yale College. At Yale, he became the well-known U.S. amateur golf champion of 1906, as well as the man with many other athletic achievements around that time. In 1927, Eben, now an industrial billionaire, selected a first-class arrangement on a train ride fully equipped with a sleeping bunk, unlike standard class with only upright seating. Little did he know at the time this decision would set in motion a chain of events that would cause his very sad suffering and early death at the age of 51. At some point during this transit, Eben fell from his bunk, slamming his shoulder in the middle walkway of the train. His arm and shoulder were suddenly racked with crippling pain. Soon after, he saw a doctor who prescribed him Radithor. Radithor was both an over-the-counter product as well as a doctor-prescribed medicine to mostly treat pain and fatigue. It was also seen advertised in some publications as a way to increase your vitality and sexual libido. It was also used to treat diabetes, among other diseases. One article even read, Great improvement in appearance, clearness of skip, and brightness of eyes. When taken in the correct doses, some of these results were said to be true by some, but either way, medications were not put through these studies and testing back then as they commonly are today. Unfortunately, most changes for the better to this non-tested system came about as a result of negative side effects. Basically, the people using the untested products were the only test or trial taking place. Capitalism surrounding unresearched claims and product advertisements didn't help matters either. Did you know, once upon a time, some cigarette brands were recommended by doctors and cigarettes in general were said to contain helpful vitamins and could be used to help you relax? If you research how tobacco and soda brands use lies in their advertisements, you will be amazed. The same is true with a number of medication brands. Faminamide was a morning sickness drug taken by mothers-to-be in the late 1950s and early 1960s, which caused birth defects in thousands of children. Another example is heroin, a painkiller, whose side effects were discovered too late. Even after some life-threatening evidence was discovered, the drug was still pushed on thousands of people by their own doctor. Doctors who kept quiet about the negative side effects in order to keep large financial kickbacks coming in from pharmaceutical companies. Radithor was nothing more than triple distilled water infused with radium, a dangerous earth element. Although many researchers and mineral miners suffered sickness or death in relation to radiation exposure, radium was still being exhumed on a normal schedule to use in products. Products such as those manufactured by William J. A. Bailey, a Harvard University dropout. Bailey didn't just make it rich from his production of Radithor, he falsely claimed to be a doctor. He also offered real doctors a 16% kickback each time they prescribed someone Radithor. Following doctors' orders, Eben took his recommended dose of Radithor and soon after, didn't just feel his pain go away, but felt good all over. He then took things way too far. This case is so interesting not just because of who Eben Byers was and could have become, and also not just because it shows the sad effects caused by taking Radithor, 
but mainly because it shows what happens when such an extreme amount is consumed. It's reported that Evans said he loved the toned-up feeling so much that he began consuming Radithor several times a day. It's believed he eventually consumed some 1,400 doses, only to lose the magic feeling and stop taking it in late 1930. Eben Byers later began to experience weight loss and crippling headaches. He actually never experienced good health again. His bones were literally deteriorating at this point and did not stop or slow down. It's tragic to think of the doom he must have felt once this cloud of certain demise hovered over his head given how invincible he was on Radithor just a few months prior. The bone deterioration was causing teeth to fall out and even exposing his brain to the outside elements it's normally protected from. He was soon then bedfast and at one point lost all function in his jaw as it detached from the skull. It was decided to surgically remove the jaw. The post-operative photos of Eben without a jaw will haunt you forever. Ebenezer McBurney Byers took his last breath on March 31st, 1932. Eben was said to have died from radiation poisoning, later called radiation syndrome. Because his remains were so radioactive, he was placed in a lead-lined coffin for burial. The Radithor producer, William Bailey, was served a cease and desist order from the Federal Trade Commission, ordering that Bailey and his organization immediately stop claiming Radithor was harmless or possess any therapeutic benefits. Bailey continued, however, to make products containing radium and still grew his companies. He later died in 1949. The remains of both Eben Byers and William Bailey were later exhumed for study and were both found to be extremely radioactive still to this day. The Byers Mansion, where Eben grew up, is located at 901 Ridge Avenue, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and still sits there today. You can actually attend class in the Byers Mansion if you become a student at the Community College of Allegheny County. The school maps call this building Byers Hall. The mansion is said to be haunted, not by the ghost of Eben, but the ghost of Eben's young niece, who died in the home, and also the ghost of a Byers staff member who committed suicide in the home. Ebenezer McBurney Byers is buried in the sixth oldest rural cemetery in America, the Allegheny Cemetery in Pittsburgh. It's a historic 300-acre cemetery on 45th Street. Eben's memorial and grave site is among French and Indian War soldiers, Archibald H. Rowan Jr., the Civil War Congressional Medal of Honor recipient, and many other fascinating internments. Even the unidentified, such as 54 victims of the Allegheny Arsenal explosion in 1862, are laid to rest there. Take not the hard lessons of our past for granted, nor the people who had to learn them on our behalf.